Hi dear students, this is Dr. Karthi Ayan, Master Teacher in Ardent FBS. Let's start with the NEET 2021 pattern physiology question. The first question is about simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion share which are the following character. This is a very important concept based question. To know the concept behind this, you have to know what is the transport mechanisms. There are two types of transport mechanism, one is called as passive transport, the other type which is called as active transport. What is the difference between these two? Whenever a molecule or a solute which goes from the higher concentration to the lower concentration. So then it is called as passive transport. This is called along the concentration gradient to make the molecule same level both inside and outside. That is the motto of the passive transport. And this is an easy process, does not need any energy. But coming to the active transport here, the molecule or solute goes from a lower concentration to the higher concentration. So this need energy, this is called against the concentration gradient. So this needs an ATP. This process of passive transport simply called as diffusion. There are two types of diffusion. One is called simple diffusion, the other thing which is called as facilitated diffusion. What is simple diffusion? Any molecule or solute which goes along the membrane without any help of, without any help of carrier protein, then it is called as simple diffusion. The facilitated diffusion, it is facilitated by, facilitated by someone else. So that, who is that someone? That is called as carrier protein. With the help of the carrier protein, if the molecule goes into the lower concentration area, then it is called as facilitated diffusion, right. So let's I just show you some cartoon picture for this so that you can able to understand very easily. Here, the man which is coming from the higher area to the lower area. So this doesn't need an energy coming down. So this is called as passive transport. But what is active transport? From the low to higher. So it's called as uphill movement. So this need an energy in the form of ATP, right. Now, we come to the question. So what is the answer for this? Simple diffusion and facilitated diffusion which are examples for your passive transport. So doesn't need energy. So we can go for the second option, right. Coming to the active transport. Active transport is something like here. The molecule from the low concentration to the higher concentration against the concentration gradient. So it needs energy. There are two types of active transport, one is called as primary active transport, the second one which is called secondary active transport. The best example for primary active transport I can say sodium potassium exchange in the cell. This sodium potassium exchange in the cell which needs ATP, right. So this is called primary active transport. Secondary active transport, the energy which is coming from something called as energy coupled process. What is this energy coupled process? For this I just give you some best example. It's called sodium glucose transport. Sodium glucose transport. For an example, if this is the cell membrane, there is a carrier protein here like this. The carrier protein where sodium come and attach. Also glucose also come and attach here in this carrier protein but sodium is outside more sodium is more outside here so sodium is less inside so the sodium enter into the cell which is a passive transport which needs which produces energy because passive transport doesn't need doesn't want an energy just produce an energy this energy is utilized by the glucose and it enter into the cell so this is what called as secondary active transport and example for this carrier proteins are three types that is called uniport. Uniport is the carrier protein which transport only one molecule then it is called as uniport. What is symport? Symport is two molecules which like a sodium and glucose transport as I told you which is goes in the same direction with the help of the carrier protein, then it is called as symport. Then what is called as antiport? Antiport is one molecule which is coming in outside and one molecule which is coming inside with the help of the carrier protein, then it is called, is called as antiport, right. Coming to the question related to the active transport, all the following are true about secondary active transport of the molecules, except 
So two molecules co-transport is sodium glucose transport which is an example for the active transport, secondary active transport is it is right. Carrier protein recovery energy is right. Transport when main, main, main molecule is being transported is it is right. Coming to the fourth option, carrier protein which does not recover energy because it belongs to what transport? Active transport, active transport always need an energy. So this is a wrong option. So coming to the next question, it is a picture based question. The type of secretion in the given image deposits. This is a type of exocrine secretion. Exocrine secretion is the secretion occurs with the help of the duct. So there are three type of exocrine secretion here which you have to know. So I just show you some picture A, B, C. Can you just tell me what is called as A? A. So A is called as holocrine and B is mirocrine and example for C is apocrine. Okay, right. So, what is this holocrine? Holocrine here the cell completely disintegrating and release the secretion. So, this is called as holocrine. And mirocrine, there is a no disintegration of cell, no damage to the cell, only the secretion comes through the duct, which is called as mirocrine. And what is this area? This is just a part of the cytoplasm which is pinched off and produce the secretion, and this is called as apocrine. Right. Example for the apocrine is mammary glands and prostate. Right. Coming to the mirocrine which is sweat glands and salivary glands. Right. And coming to the holocrine which is a sebaceous glands right so now coming to the question which is asked so see the picture there is a no disintegration of cell no damage to the cell so the secretion just comes inside so it belongs to what it belongs to the a that is your mirocrine type of secretion right so the next question the image shown in the picture belongs to what type of muscle suppose in case these type of histology based images for the muscles given to you I just given some identification points like how to identify. So watch it carefully. So these are the three muscles, right? Skeletal muscles, cardiac muscles and smooth muscles. How to identify? First of all, you have to see about how to identify the skeletal muscles. I just tell you. Skeletal muscles are just like this. The chicken pieces which are parallel to placed parallel to each other, right? So the skeletal muscles are also look like. It is a parallel ribbons of muscles are parallel to each other and remember skeletal muscles are multinucleated very important distinguishing feature. So it has multinucleated and where this nucleus is placed one more very important identification feature this nucleus which is seen periphery so important point which you can give you easily identify about the skeletal muscles the nucleus if it is here multinucleated and it is a present in the periphery then you can say it is a skeletal muscles then what about how do you differentiate a cardiac muscle and a smooth muscle in a cardiac muscle if you see the histological diagram you can see some lines right so what is this lines these are called as intercalated disc if you see intercalated disc that means it is a cardiac muscle what is this intercalated disc do? This intercalated disc which transport the signal from one cell to another cell without any delay. That is the function of the intercalated disc. This is present only in the cardiac muscle. If you see this, this is called intercalated disc. So it is a cardiac muscle. So A which is a skeletal muscle, B which is a cardiac muscle and C which is a smooth muscle. Smooth muscle which is a the nucleus present in the center, it is not in the periphery and it is a unicellular. So coming to here, so what is this one? So if you see this, so where this nucleus are presented, the nucleus is in center, not in the periphery. So it is a unicellular. So the answer for this is, is smooth muscles. So this is the way to differentiate or identify which type of muscle it belongs to.
I come into a one more question which is asked in the muscle physiology in the same exam. In a skeletal muscle fiber, which are the following is decreased. Let us see the concept behind this. So, in a skeletal muscle, it has a two type of filament. One is called as actin filament, the other type which is called as myosin filament, right? And here you have to know two lines and three bands. So, what are those two lines? Two filaments I told you, right? So, what are those two filaments? This is called as thin filament. This is called as thin filament. And the brown color which is shown here, which is called as thick filament. The thin filaments are called as actin and thick filaments are called as myosin. So, during the contraction, actin and myosin together overlap with each other. It is happening in the contraction process. So, what are those two lines? So, Z line and M line. And if you just intersect the thin filament or actin, then it is called as Z line. If you intersect the thick filament or myosin, then it is called as M line. So simple. Now, coming to the bands, there are three types of bands which is called A band, H band, I band. So, where this I band is present, the I band is the non overlapping part of the actin filament which is called as I band. And what is this H band? The non overlapping band of the or part of the myosin filament which is called as H band non overlapping part of the thin filament thin filament or actin which is called as i band non overlapping part of the myosin which is called as h band then what is one more band which is called as a band a band is overlapping part of the actin and myosin which is called as a band now where it is this area this area where there is a overlapping of the actin and myosin so this area where it is called as a band where and all the actin and myosin is overlapping then it is called as a band what is called as sarcomere what is called as sarcomere sarcomere is the functional unit of the muscle fibers so it is from where to where from one z line to the other z line which is called as the sarcomere let us see what is happening in the muscle contraction. So, during the muscle contraction, the myosin and the actin which overlap each other. So, it, it comes like this. So, the myosin will come high like this and actin will come like this. So, it is overlapping with each other. So, because of this, the H band which is so decreased, sometimes even it is absent also. H band became very, very, very narrowest part. What about I band? I band became narrow, it is also decreased. But this A band which is not changed. So, these are the three things which you have to know here in the muscle contraction process. So, what is the question which is asked in your skeletal muscle fiber? Which of the following is decreased? Whether I band or A band or Z band? So, answer is I band. You okay, can easily score this type of question if you know the concept. Okay, and coming to the next question, the question is about progesterone levels rise to highest level during female hormonal cycle. So, usually the progesterone which is secreted by something called as corpus luteum. So, what is this corpus luteum? Corpus luteum is after the end of the ovulation from the follicle mean the ovum which is released from the follicle, the remaining granulosa cells which all together and make a group okay and now this is called as lutein cells and they enlarged this lutein cell which is enlarged and filled with some lipid inclusion material, lipid inclusion material which becomes yellowish okay and this yellowish material which is called as corpus luteum and this process which is called as luteinization simply if you want to understand means so after the ovum which comes out of the graphene follicle at the end of the menstruation cycle so the remaining cells 
the granulosa cells which all together makes a, a, a cluster of cells with the lipid inclusion and this gives a yellowish appearance which makes the corpus luteum and that corpus luteum which produce the progesterone. Now coming to the options which is given here between the ovulation and beginning of the menstruation. Yes. So after the ovulation is completed, just beginning of the menstruation, so the corpus luteum is formed. So this corpus luteum which produces the progesterone. So answer is A. No fibers that are more sensitive to the hypoxia. So before and all, they are, the options will be like A fibers, B fibers, C fibers. It's so easy to answer. But nowadays, the options are given very hard. This is just taken from Ghana. So far, you have to know among these four options, which is A fiber, which is B fiber, which is C fiber, then only you can be able to answer for this question. Right. Let's see about this. Preganglionic autonomic fibers, which are called as B fibers. Gamma motor neuron, which is called as A fibers. Dorsal root ganglionic fibers and postganglionic sympathetic fibers, which are called as C fibers. And you have to know a mnemonic for this. A, B, C, which is more sensitive to PHC. You can remember like a peripheral health center. P for pressure, H for hypoxia and C for cocaine. Cocaine means here I am just giving you as a local anesthesia. So what does it mean? A fibers are more sensitive to the pressure. B fibers are more sensitive to the hypoxia, C fibers are more sensitive to the local anesthesia. Coming to the last question, which antigen present in all blood group types of ABO blood grouping system? So easy question. The answer for this is H antigen. Right. A antigen which is present only in the A blood group, B antigen which is present only in the B blood group. But the question is about which antigen present in all blood group and D antigen which is present in only RH positive. So H antigen is nothing but it is a group of carbohydrates which is called as oligosaccharides which is attached to the RBC cell membrane so which is seen with every type of blood group so answer is H antigen for this hope this session is very useful for you cheers have a good day